Hai, Assalamualaikum. We are from University Technical Malaysia Melaka, student of Mechanical Engineering Technology. This semester, under the subject of Engineering Ethics, we have been tasked to interview a practice engineer regarding on Code of Professional Conduct in Engineering Ethics. My name is Muhammad Hakim Membasi and this is my group member, Solihah and Chan Sok -e. Before we go to our question, could you please introduce yourself briefly, like your education background, company you work currently, your position in the company, and etc. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is uh, Fatin Shaira Bintarullah. You guys can call me Miss Fatin. My, uh, my background is uh, on civil engineering. Currently, I'm working as an engineer at uh, Tenaga National Berhad. Um, I've been working for almost two years as a civil engineer. Uh, my job scope is uh, more on audit uh, the progress of the construction project. First of all, uh, I want to know, do you ever get to know about engineering ethics? Uh, how and where you reach the information? Regarding the engineering ethics, uh, I know it since study because uh, I've been taking the subject project management. So they touch uh, about the engineering ethics. And also uh, in my company, uh, the company uh, provide the training for us, uh, such as engineering ethics, uh, integrity, laws, and so on. So we'll be provided uh, that kind of training. So in your workplace at TNB, do you have to sign or endorse or approve any document or certification? Like for kind of certification, uh, I don't have, I'm not qualified to uh, endorse, but for internal internal document, I have uh, put an endorsement uh, for that document because I am auditor, so they need my sign to proceed uh, the document for the next step. Ms. Martin, do you have keep any report on the audit? Yes, but um, for our for our company, we didn't have logbook to record uh, what we have done for our audit. We just uh, have a server that we put our database in that. So uh, in, any, in any case, if we try to uh, follow up back for our past, past record, we just uh, check our database to check. Uh, so it's already provide the date and time uh, who's the participant who's the one who the one who will be inspect and what kind of uh, issue that had happened during that uh, inspection uh, miss patin shahira could you please tell us about the most challenging part being an engineer in Malaysia? i work in a big company so i think the most challenging part is i need to compete with other engineer to to bring myself up there's so many so many engineers uh, in my uh, company at the same level. Uh, we have uh, uh, a different grade with a different, uh, what we call different seniority, yes. Uh, so uh, when uh, there's so many um, engineers at, at the same level as mine, so we need to compete to each other to make ourselves uh, better uh, for our company. So for the last question, you have talked about seniority. So have you had any difficulties in communicating with your superior or your team members? And how did you handle the situation, the communication situation? Yes, uh, I have a lot of difficulty in communicating with the other team member, but uh, I will try to give publicly technical opinion based on my knowledge of the fact and competent in the subject matter using a soft tone. Ms. Fatin Shaira, if you don't mind, uh, this is the last question from us. Uh, have you ever accepted any contract or benefit from outside agent? Uh, if yes, uh, why? No, because the same code of conduct clarified that a registered graduate engineer should not solicit or accept any consideration financial or otherwise directly or indirectly from outside agents in connection with the work for which is which he is responsible. Oh, I see. So thank you, Ms. Fatin, for your time. 
being interviewing with us. We appreciate your help. And that's all for today. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nurul Fitri Binti Parman. Okay. I am graduated from University Tenaga Nasional. And currently, I'm working as mechanical engineer at Radica Malaysia Sendian Berhad. Okay, so we start our interview with my uh, first question. So, do you ever get to know about engineering ethics and how and where you reach the information? Okay, I got the information during my study. Okay, what I know, engineering ethics uh, will be defined as the rules and standards governing the conduct of uh, engineers in their roles as professionals. Okay, Miss, uh, in your workplace, do you have to sign or endorse or approve any document or certification? Okay, uh, so far, no, but in my opinion, a registered graduate engineer should check or verify with due diligence the accuracy of facts and data before he signs or endorses any statement or certification. He shall not sign on such documents unless he has supervised, witnessed, or inspected the carrying out uh, of such work. Next question is, do you have keep either logbook or record that recorded all your activity that has been done in the company? For now, uh, yes. Uh, what I've recorded is such as the date and time, uh, what I'm doing there, and uh, any, uh, any input or uh, uh, knowledge, and then I will record it. I see. So, could you please tell us about the most challenging uh, part being an engineer in Malaysia? Okay, since now Radica Malaysia Senior High focus on healthcare sector, so it mostly our client uh, from hospital. Okay, so as we know, hospitals are high energy usage of buildings with strict ventilation, uh, filtration, pressurization, humidification, and temperature requirements that are in place 24 hours a day. Okay, this means uh, that each project has unique offset of design criteria and design solutions. Specifically, there are challenges dealing with airborne infectious uh, insulation room and protective environment rooms in maintaining pressurizations and uh, in the location of diffusers and return grids to maintain not only the correct pressure but also the desired uh, path of airflow. Uh, from clean to less clean and then hospitals are also under tremendous pressure to reduce costs which in turn translates uh, into tension between the construction costs and the long-term energy and uh, maintenance costs of the medical si mechanical system. Oh, I see. So the next question is have you had any difficulties in communicating with your superior or your team members? And how did you handle the communication situation in your company? For now, I have no any difficulties. Uh, if, uh, if I have any difficulties in communicating problems, I will tell them honestly because we are working as a team. So uh, I will using a soft and polite tone. For the last question, uh, Ms. Petri, have you ever accept any contract or benefit from outside agent? If uh, if yes, why? And if not, also why? Can we know? Okay, I uh, know because the BM code of conduct clarified that a graduate engineer shall not accept any benefit or compensation uh, from more than one party for professional engineering services on the same project or for professional engineering services pertaining to the same project unless the circumstances are fully disclosed and agreed to by all interested parties. So uh, I guess that's all for uh, for the interview question from us. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration to be interviewed by us, uh, Miss Petri. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Okay, wish you all the best. Thank you.